Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you, my brothers and sisters. When I look at the world, I realize that people are constantly divided into groups. Someone decides who belongs and who doesn't. Those who don't belong are devalued and dehumanized. They are called the others, the parasites or the kuffar. I grew up in Vienna and always had a diverse group of friends. There were Austrians, foreigners, Jews, Christians, non-religious people and Muslims. For us, this was normal. We didn't always agree, but we always had a lot of fun. When I got older and grew my first facial hair, I realized that I'm different, that I'm part of a minority. At my high school, I was the only person of color. My teacher used to tell me that I should rather switch to a less academic school because I would never make it anyway. And I would be among my people there. I became worse in school and that's when the arguments with my parents started. From then on, I did not like to be at home anymore. When I first met people from the extremist scene, I entered a whole new world. We shared the same interests in religion, martial arts and the same opinions. They were strong, had something to say and didn't take shit from others. I was welcomed with open arms. Everyone was very nice to me. Everything I was looking for at the time I found there. Solidarity and strength. It was like a new family. My older brother also knew some of the guys. My family started to worry more and more. Why are you hanging out with these people, they asked. They are idiots who don't have anything to do all day except talk about the same topics. What they are saying has nothing to do with our religion. Don't run after them, make your own decisions and stand by them. We had a lot of heated arguments, especially about religion. I told my new brothers that my family is against the new way of life and how I behave. One of the older guys asked me, do your parents pray? I said, no, my parents are Muslims, but they don't pray. He said, brother, between faith and unbelief is only a prayer. If they don't pray, how can they be Muslims? You need to make tikfir on them, declare them as infidels and distance yourself from them. I said, but they are my parents. They raised me and showed me Islam. He said, brother, you don't have to declare the tikfir if you are too weak. But you know that they are infidels and therefore enemies. Keep that in mind. You are allowed to respect them, but not to love them. In the beginning, it was very difficult to not show any love to my parents. I was very harsh and dismissive to my mother. She cried a lot because of that. There were more and more arguments. Sometimes even the police were at home and my parents? They cooperated with them. At least this is how it seemed. This is how the trust between us started to break down. Unlike my actual family, there were never any arguments between my new brothers. We all thought and believed in the same things and had the same goal. It was much easier than constantly arguing with my parents. This is why I spent almost all of my time with the brothers, my new family. We often looked at pictures and watched videos from different groups. The brothers and sisters there seemed strong because they lived according to their faith without compromise, abided by all the rules and empowered each other. I wanted to be part of that and achieve something great, fight for a good cause, either here or there, in Dar al-Kufar, in the realm of unbelief. The Kufar are bad, dirty, their hearts are not pure, they don't believe in God, they are impure beings, worse than dogs, we say it all the time. I saw enemies everywhere, even at home. My brother didn't give up and kept trying to get me out. It was just like they said, Kufr bitta'ud. You have to declare those infidels who don't abide God's law, al-wala wal bara. We talked about loyalty and disloyalty, and about alleged role models who acted according to these principles. At this point, I didn't care about my brother anymore. Someone always believed they were the next sheikh. There was always someone who was trying to correct what you said or did. Some of them were pointless battles. We always watched lectures at home, collected arguments and then kept on discussing. But in reality it was only about being better than the other. We were not allowed to tell jokes, listen to music, play games and do other things that were fun. It weakens your faith, they said. 
You were not allowed to be in contact with any girls, even if they were in the same class. You were only allowed to be in contact with them when their wali, their male guardian, was also present. I thought to myself, even if I want to join, I can't and I won't obey these rules. Gradually, I started to question the rules. Who said that this is haram? Show me the evidence. Someone always came up with some random verses and interpretations by other shuyukh from other religious authorities that I have never heard before to prove their point. It was very confusing. I didn't know anymore what was right and what was wrong. One day I was reading at home when I suddenly heard the doorbell ringing. I ran into the hallway and saw two older guys attacking my brother. Even though my brother was an infidel to me, I reacted immediately and intervened. My brother hugged me. It was like a splinter in my heart. I felt how our bond had been restored. Just a few hours earlier, he had been nothing but an infidel to me, a dog. My little sister came too. She thought my action was very cool, like in Hollywood, but also very aggressive. For the first time in a very long time, we didn't argue, but only talked. What are you actually doing? You look fit and you are well-spoken, he said. As a Muslim, you have to say everything in a beautiful language, I said. For one evening, I forgot everything. The alleged enemies, the alleged brothers, and still, I felt better than ever before. I thought to myself, why can't it always be like that? I will no longer blindly listen to others and do things only because the group says so. If the rules of the group imply that you are not allowed to love your parents, then those cannot be good rules, and certainly not rules from God. I don't want to be part of a group that dehumanizes other people, calls them kuffar or dogs or other things, just to feel strong. I want to make my own decisions and take the responsibility for my thoughts and actions. Don't we have to be accountable ourselves and for our own actions? For what we have and have not done? Is that not why in the Quran it says, It will be the day when no person shall have power to do anything for another, and the decisions that they will be holy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If everyone is responsible for their own actions, why should we let others decide for us? I choose my friends not according to religion, the color of their skin or their nationality, but rather if they are good people or not. And even if my family, my friends and I don't always agree and argue a lot, we still stick together and everyone can speak their mind and have their freedom, as long as they don't harm anyone else. That is my path, Jamal al-Khatib.